Uh, greetings and welcome to Seclair, to our educational rounds, a continuing effort that we make every week to bring forth a subject out to you that you can use and would be beneficial in your personal life. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... Um, Allison from Mount Union. I'm a PA student. And on my right... Emily, a PA student from St. Francis University. And given the fact that these two young ladies are approaching the end of their academic careers, uh, filled with a, some anxiety and stress, uh, perhaps I thought today a perfect subject would be presented would be procrastination. Uh, so what does procrastination mean to you, Allison? Waiting till the last minute to complete all my assignments. Mm -hmm. Constantly putting things off, put it off, put it off, put it off. Mm -hmm. So I would suspect out there, I would suspect that procrastination may be, may be a human trait. One of the most profound human traits that, 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 that exist. However, when I see people that come into Seclair, and remember we're an integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility treating people first, not necessarily diagnoses, then when somebody says they're a terrible, I'm a terrible procrastinator, then generally, generally what type of mood condition follows that, Allison? What, what, uh, what, what is procrastination? Like an avoidant behavior. You can certainly can be avoidant, and you're, when you procrastinate, Emily, you still know that those things are out there. Yes, you do. Which causes a great deal of... Anxiety. Absolutely. So when, when we become anxious, we know that these things need to get done, Allison. Mm -hmm. However, we're, we're unable to make a move to get them done. Right. Could you help me understand that? Could you help our friends out there well, understand? Many people use the excuse that they work better under pressure. Mm. So that's one clue into that. Behavior. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with Allison. Mm -hmm. So when you need to get that paper done and you avoid doing it until it's 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. And you get it done and then you, then you sweat blood and you have to get it done, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you say that to me, when you say I work best under pressure, who are you trying to convince? Myself. Yourself, <laughs> right. So you're talking to yourself, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So if you talk to yourself, Miss Emily, that tells me that there's what? It tells me that there's two of you. Yes. They tell me there's an observer and there's the thinker. So for everyone out there, remember it's the thinker that's the procrastinator. It's the thinker that gets dysregulated. It's the thinker that, is, that are having these thoughts. So remember what we talked about earlier in cognitive behavioral therapy when we, when we talked about dissonance and we talked about consonance, okay? Consonance is when is when, you're, is when our mind loves to seek level water. Our mind doesn't like to be upset. However, the dissonance is when there's a disconnect between what our thoughts are and what our behaviors are, okay? So you have a paper due, right? I do. Okay, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm gonna get this done. I don't wanna wait until the last minute. And that creates some internal havoc going on in your head, doesn't it? However, so, just like you told me earlier, our brains create consonants by giving the defense of I work well under pressure. I work best under pressure, <laughs> which brings our brain back into consonants, which brings our brain back into harmony, and we don't have those distressing thoughts, right? Right. So if you have ever conquered uh, procrastination, perhaps you can share a few tips with us. Um, well, you usually keep in mind that you have a due date. Maybe try to start a day before the due date instead of a couple hours. That's how I work usually. Um, lots of caffeine is typically needed, mm. and then you crash afterwards, it seems like. I think I'll avoid that strategy. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, uh, how about you? Allison, excuse me. Well, um, lately I've been trying not to procrastinate, so I kind of start right when I hear about it and I usually it's like a 10 minute excerpt until like the week of the due date mm -hmm. and then I kind of pound more hours in two. So remember, <laughs> remember for everyone out there, our bodies and our brains like structure and consistency. Structure and consistency. Here's, a, here's one method that, that I suggest to people to begin to deal with procrastination and that's take a week of your life, take a week of your life 
mark down when you get up in the morning, let's start on Monday, when you get up and when you go to bed. And chart and block all those hours in between and please be honest, please be honest. You don't want to, to write things like, you don't want somebody to say, oh my gosh, he spent five hours watching uh, The Night of the Living Dead. Uh, no, if that's what you did, then that's what you did. It's important to block off. So procrastinators often say, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Oh, time is my enemy, right? Okay. okay. <laughs> so here's your first tip out there. My suggestion would be to structure a week and block it off every day according to what you did. Be honest and be factual about what you did. When you, then when we go back and we look at that week, we can always find areas of time. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some people were sit on the couch for two or three hours worrying and have anxiety about procrastinating about that's a project time they that could have been working. They need to get done. So that's your first tip. So what do we do? We vote on small successes, right? Right. We vote on small successes. Most of us try to get to climb up the Mount Everest before we even learn how to, to put on our boots. Okay, so the idea is begin to start with some structure and organization in your life. And you may think this is foolish, however, I'm gonna, this is a challenge for everybody out there. I want you to start making your bed in the morning. Start making your bed in the morning. Sounds like a silly childish thing. How many of you out there do that? How many of you out there neatly make your bed in the morning? Actually, it would only take moments, and my guess is I do have a hunch that you're gonna, that you're gonna find that it's more difficult than you think it is. However, when you begin to start off your day with an accomplishment, no matter however small, we build on small achievable goals and we build on accomplishments, do we not? Yes. Okay, so the next thing is procrastinators tend, generally tend to generate a lot of lists. Are you a list maker in your head? I am. Mm -hmm. Are you a list maker? I you? actually write them out. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that. Talk about that. Um, I every day usually make a list of what I need to do once I get home or a grocery list. I'm always, and then I love crossing them off. That gives me such a, almost like a high. So Sounds like you're well on your way. When you build on small achievable goals, that's a reward, is it not? Yes. It's a reward just like somebody taking, taking drugs or alcohol when you affect the dopamine in your brain, the receptors in your brain that's what the dopamine, that's the reward. Is it correct? Yes. So you're rewarding yourself. Good for you. However, I would guess out there that most of us are list makers. And how, let me ask you this, how many times do you make additions to and deletions of that list in your head every single day? My guess is that this is probably one of the single biggest reasons for your racing thoughts and for the reason why you can't get to sleep at night, okay? Having all these lists in your head. So I'm going to challenge you to get this list out of your head and get it onto paper. And my second challenge is not to do it on a word processor, it's too impersonal. Get a sheet of paper and not even a ballpoint pen. That too is impersonal. Get a, get a lead pencil and I want you to write down your list on a list of paper. And I want you to block these off into these particular areas. I want to block with everything that's on your plate. I want you to block off things that don't need to get done, and I think you'll be surprised that there are many things on your list that do not need to get done. I want you to make a list, on, take from that list of things on your plate and transfer it over to a column headed other people's responsibilities. There are things that are on your list that are other people's responsibilities, and whether they get done is absolutely up to them. They're, you're giving those people a whole lot of power over your life. The second, th the third thing is, is I'd like you to make a block and transfer from with the things that are on my plate to things that are out of your control. Things that are out of your control. So how often do we do we make lists and we anxiety and worry and procrastinate about things that we have no control over? A lot. Absolutely. So the idea, Allison, is is to recognize that, is it not? It is. And what what a better idea is to put it right in front of you in black and white out of your head, out onto the paper, okay? Then there are other things on that list that I'd like you to take everything that's on your plate to another block on that, on that particular paper, and that'd be things that drain me, things that drain you. So here's, here's, here's a suggestion. When you write that, and please do this if you have to do it a few times a day, that's fine. Only take moments. You make the list everything that's on your plate. My first suggestion would be to look at the things that drain you. Look at the things that drain you. Would it make sense to tackle one of those first? Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So quite often what people do, they, they, they tend to take the easier, softer way. They tend to take the easy things, and then the hard things never get done, do they? Yeah. The hard things never get done. Is it easier to make a phone call that you have to make to a friend or to begin to write that paper? Oh, to call the friend. Oh, of course. Of course. So remember, it's, all, it's the easier, softer way. And this is, when, this is when that observer can say, are you taking the easier, softer way? Are you, are you going the other way out? So what, what did we talk about today? We talked about setting small achievable goals, like getting up in the morning and simply making your bed. As childish and as simple as it may seem, I challenge you to do that. Number two, I'm asking you to block out a week. Uh, every day, every hour of the day, I want you to write what you did. I want you to write what you did, what were you thinking about, and what you were doing. And number three, we're going to make that list, correct? Yes, sir. Everything that's on your plate and the, and the blocks of things that are out of your control, things that are other people's responsibilities, things that, can you think of anything, what I say? The bigger things that are tough to do, tackle first. Things that drain, that drain you, right. Mm -hmm. Out of control, other people's responsibilities. And how about this, things that don't need to get done. How much energy do you have? How much energy do you worry about thinking about things that you have no control over? too much energy. Well, so so how would how would what would your suggestions be to our dear audience members on how to deal with that? Uh, take a deep breath in, exhale, think about the things that need to be done today, tackle those first. Excellent. So we're going to leave you with the DBT stop skill, okay? Mm -hmm. And of course, all the, all the skills in DBT seem to have acronyms, do they not? Yes. Absolutely. So the first of all, the things that we do when we feel ourselves getting overwhelmed, and of course, this is being paying attention on purpose, being present and aware, this is becoming that observer, it's being able to stop, literally and or figuratively, by taking a deep breath. I would suggest everyone out there to be their mantra be, I am right here and it is right now. I am right here and it is right now. Then you accurately describe the situation that you're in. Describe the situation you're in. I have a paper due yeah. and I'm feeling anxious and worried. I have so many other things on my plate and I'm starting to get overwhelmed. I'm worried about, I'm even worried about my worrying about procrastinating. So we get, and we have to identify those things. And to do that, we have to have the proper vocabulary, correct? Yes. So this is a little offer to everyone out there. For everyone out there that would like a list of feeling words from Seclair, please let us know, and we'll be glad to get you a list of feeling words out in the mail. I think you'll be surprised at how many they are. So when we actually put a name to something, it gives us some power over it, does it not? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what else did we ask people to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So we're doing so we're doing that stop skill. We accurately describe. Then then we look back and we say, okay, what am I what skill am I going to use? And my suggestion would be to begin by taking a wise mind approach to your life. A wise mind approach merely means to respond rather than react, to become that observer. We create that briefest of buffers between the thought and the action, or in this case, inaction. So that's my challenge to everyone out there today. And if you'd like to have a list of uh, what we discussed today, uh, we'd be glad to get that out to you also. You can email us and we'll email that back to you. Uh, and as always, we give a pre-prescription at the end of every uh, podcast, do we not? Fruits and nuts. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Fishing with no bait. Unplug your television. And, and have a great day. And have a great day. <laughs> and go fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we can fish without bait. And you're, as, as always, your charge is to do a kindness for another. And by doing a kindness for another, you'll be doing a kindness for yourself. Namaste.